Welcome, everybody. My name is uh, Mella. I'm with the uh, FinTech Europe organization. It's really fun to see you all here. I hope you had a nice opening. I hope you enjoyed uh, our keynote. And now we're going to move on to uh, our first panel discussion of the morning about a very interesting topic, I think, the Challenger Banks, or as we call it in the program, the mind-blowing Challenger Banks. Mind-blowing. 600 years of banking, I believe. They invented it in Italy. And they say that not much has changed in those 600 years. I think our keynote stressed that fact um, very clearly. 600 years without any change. And there suddenly are the challenger banks. Six, five years ago, it all started. And the big question, of course, is those challenger banks, are they really going to lead to a revolution, a real change, or is it just um, a shop front, a fancy app, or as I, as, as I heard yesterday, is it just a digital lipstick? That's the question that we're going to uh, answer with our elite panel, I must say, because we have some really nice panel members for you. Uh, I'd like to introduce them to you first before we start. First, we have uh, Italy's answer to the FinTech attack. He's the driving force behind Milano's open innovation and co-founder of the promising Buddy Bank at Unicredi, the startup that promises an unprecedented customer per FTE ratio. Please meet Massimo Bondanza. <laughs> Number two in our panel, the always inspiring dawn of digital banking, serial fintech investor who refuses to sit on his rocking chair. So he's now also the COO of Moven and he's dedicated to bring banking into the mobile and digital age. Please meet... Mircho Miyashku. <laughs> Number three in our panel, he is the thought leader on the digital economy and a fanatic fintech observer. He's also a blogger and he's the vice president of strategy and innovation at Sparbank. He is the center of the Nordic fintech community. Please meet Christopher Hernius. <laughs> Number four on the list, investment banker turned entrepreneur, the notorious disruptor business developer of number 26, the first mobile-only bank in Europe. Please meet Nicolas Kopp. <laughs> and last but not least, the one that enables us all in the fintech industry to work together. Strategist and financial services expert. He's also the head of financial enterprises at Equinix, offering the most interconnected data centers across five continents. Please meet Robin Manicom. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let me start um, with my first question. Um, I'm going to direct my first question to uh, Mircho from uh, Moven. Uh, Mircho, you were also present uh, during the keynote uh, presentation, I'm sure. Um, my first question to, to you. Do you believe that a challenger bank like Moven can really force the bank to an innovate or die moment? First... Thank you for coming. Yeah, we are, are glad to see so many people interested in hearing what we have to say. Um, I personally don't like the word challenger bank. It sort of assumes an answer to your question that we are trying to force the banks to innovate or die. Uh, my view is that banks will have to listen to us, will learn from us, may May, may even work with us. It's difficult to build a huge bank starting from nothing, as it's difficult to build any kind of business starting from nothing. Some of us, of the new banks, will succeed. Most of us will not. And banks that will learn from us will survive. Long term, it's probably beyond our careers when we'll see banks that have not listened to the challenger banks uh, go out of business. It will not happen as fast as we have seen in other industries because there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of capital, there is a lot of people. So changes will not happen as fast as we have seen in the digital photography business or in the newspaper business. It will still happen. So we are not forcing banks to change today, but the ones that don't look at what we do and don't learn from us or collaborate with us do it at. Uh, uh, their own 
That, that sounds they so would force their own demise in time. It sounds so friendly. What, what's the impact that Moven is going to make uh, within our lifetimes then? What change are you going to... I didn't say lifetime. I said careers. So maybe I have okay. a shorter okay. career. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's the same for you because yeah. you don't want to be in your rocking chair. Yeah. yeah. There is an impact that we make today and uh, there is the direct impact that we are taking customers from existing banks. Yeah? And... And I've had a conversation with a bank that said, we have 12 million customers, yeah? Your 100,000, they don't count, yeah? I've used the metaphor, you are a mosquito to me. Yeah, <laughs> maybe today, but I'm growing 10 times per year. I don't think you do that. You're actually going down 3% per year. So yes, there will be an intersection point. Yeah? And we don't make an impact today. We'll make it this year, more next year, more the year after. Christopher, you are with an established uh, bank. Uh, you see these uh, challengers, if I can call them that. Um, what do you think the biggest challenge is for a challenger bank, from your perspective? Well, it depends on the market. But uh, I think uh, just as was discussed earlier today with, with the brand of the traditional banks, especially when it comes to retail banking, banking is such low interest. So the branding of the traditional banks has a strong... Um, as a strong position in the local communities. And even though people do not trust banking and financial industry, uh, a lot of surveys that we have conducted says that for some strange reason, people trust their bank and why they chose to that bank is probably because their parents chose it for them. So banking is such low interest that it's really, really difficult to get somebody to, to change their banking relationship. But does that mean that you don't have to worry? You just uh, watch them die? No, I totally agree with Mitra. Uh, this is, we, we, have to, we have to innovate. Um, we have to renew ourselves because I, I think the, the slides that David showed earlier showing the online banking of the 90s, showing the online banking of, of, uh, of today, I'm going to steal that point because it's, it's, ec it's an excellent point proving how we have been believing that we have been innovating but we have been incrementally just adjusting everything. Um, the business model is the same. I used to work with the media and the telco industry, and I entered banking when fintech was at the denial stage. And my opening statement was, let's not make all the same mistakes as the media and telco industry did. And nobody wanted to listen to me at that point, because that's a couple of years ago. Uh, but now, uh, challenger banks like Moven has gotten all, also the traditional bankers uh, waking up and seeing that this is happening, looking at uh, the challenger bank presenting at... Um, the money 2020 last last year with uh, Mondo's presentation really got some of the traditional bankers waking up, seeing that, whoa, this customer experience thing, this is no longer just digital lipstick. This is essential and crucial for customer engagement, having some kind of different way of being relevant and contextual in the customer's lives. Then what's the most important move Sparbank is going to make to uh, counter that? Uh, I think we have to... Well, our concrete move uh, will come at, at a later point. We have to work through all the cultural bar barriers, all the architecture barriers, all the things that David talked about. I, I could really relate to everything he said, and uh, it was painful inside to hear him his saying that because he was describing my everyday pain. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Nicholas, yes, sir. number 26. I think uh, you scored a couple thousand customers again this quarter. Uh, but we also hear uh, Christopher say it's costing a lot of money to build a brand, and that's where the established banks uh, can win, because they have a brand, they have a name, they're already top of mind. What's the trick of number 26 to uh, get so many customers then? Yeah, um, I, I sort of actually disagree with you a little bit, Christopher. So when we talk about building a brand, which is uh, obviously um, crucial and something that classical retail banks bring with them, I think when you say like it's actually a low interest product for people, we want to change exactly that. We want to make it like good looking, easy to use, sort of what, ha what has happened also with a phone, like functional, like it actually adds value to your life. It's not just a sort of means to something else. So I think what we, how we think about sort of banking is exactly that attractive <coughs> product. And then with that attractive product, we get these customers and they, they're happy to join us because it's cool what we do um, and they like to use it. What do you mean with cool? Is that 18-year-old cool or is it cool for everybody? 
I think it is. It ranges from 18-year-old cool all the way up to 56-year-old cool. Oh, wow. So it's cool for us too, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what we see also, like in terms of, like you would expect, okay, our product is usually used by by younger customers and so forth. Um, we actually surprised by how many. 30 to 40 year old people regularly use our our account as their main account, so that is very very nice to see also. Thank you, Massimo. Um, uh, you have your own strategy <coughs> with uh, Unicredit. You guys decided to build the Buddy Bank, yeah. uh, almost as an answer to uh, the Challenger banks. Uh, h- how is Buddy Bank going to be cool? Well, for, first of all, we are still waiting the, the banking license from uh, from European Central Regulated. Bank, so uh, we are still not a bank. We have zero customers right now, but we feel part of this uh, great revolution. And uh, we feel that uh, we are part of this great revolution, uh, basically, on two different dimensions. Uh, the first one is building a bank from scratch. And I, I, I can tell you, it's not an easy thing, because we have to build everything from core banking to the front end for the customer. Uh, and, and it's really a tough, uh, a tough, uh, uh, tough thing. Um, well, we think that uh, we are part of this uh, great revolution of challenger banks. And uh, uh, we are playing on a different, different scenario. So we're playing on a scenario that is uh, um, led by customer, first of all. Uh, what is important from, from our part is to understand the customer and to make the customer um, feel, let's say, the, um, in the center of, of the bank. But how do you and, do that? How, and, how do you yeah, understand the customer what, better than you already do? And this is, a, 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 for us, it's a great opportunity. And it's also something that is uh, involving the, the role of the challenger banks. There are uh, slim, thin banks, capital light, that can act very fast, especially from an IT point of view. So they can react very quickly to the changing demands of the customers. So enabling customers living their life and uh, so uh, managing their lifestyle day by day, we think it would be a great uh, thing uh, for acquiring <coughs> new customer and having all the parameters, all the metrics, especially the referral and retention one, uh, at, in a good place uh, for the banks to... But, but you also want to make money, I'm sure, with Buddy Bank. So um, how about the cost? Are you able to lower the cost from, what was it, 70 we pounds are, to one euro? Yeah. We are building a bank... Uh, that will have uh, uh, an eye on costs, of course, for customers and uh, internal costs. But we are building a bank that is based on service. So we want to delight the customer. Uh, today I heard uh, uh, the CEO of ABN Amro that for the first time uh, um, spoke about uh, a bank sexy, a sexy bank. So uh, our founder, uh, our lead, Andrew D'Alessandro, from the very beginning, uh, created a kind of payoff, banking has never been so sexy, because banking is not sexy right now, because it's not sexy, because it's not near to the customer. So we want to uh, be really near to the customer, uh, doing some specific operation, like partnership with lifestyle services, and partnership, of course, with fintech startups, to offer great service in areas where the bank is not usually uh, so present, uh, so I have to, to give this kind of uh, services. But I believe it's, it's hard work to build a new bank. Uh, you're waiting for your license, uh, yeah. you need to have all this new uh, technology. Uh, Christopher, you, you deal with the same. Uh, why don't you just partner with Moven and, and get their stuff and white label it uh, into, uh, into Norway? Well, just to say to Massimo first, if if you manage to get Italians to perceive your bank as sexy, please tell me your secret because I'm going to copy that. (laughs) Only Italians can Uh, do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Now, if if it were up to me, uh, I would have done a lot of things. There's a lot of would have, could have, should have. Uh, And I think David pointed out with, uh, with the Kodak and the Blockbuster and everything that you have, a lot of the uh, existing incumbents are caught in the headlights. They're seeing it coming, but it's coming like, a bit slowly. Uh, it's sort of like walking out in the, in like the dripping rain, where you're like, well, it's a bit uncomfortable, but you don't get wet right away. And you don't re- realize that how wet you are until you're soaking wet. And I think that that's sort of how the banking industry are now will experience the fintech, fintech uh, more of an evolution, uh, where you have evolution is not incremental. You have some leaps here and there, but there are 100,000 customers here, 100,000 customers, uh, 100, customers there. And it's a bit painful in the week that the headlines are there, 
and then you forget it. And then you have enough of those incidents adding up, and suddenly you are, are at a point where this is a huge challenge. But it is often too late. If you look at how digital cameras versus the Apple iPhone, I did a chart on the numbers there. And in the beginning, it's like, this is irrelevant for us. We're making so much money. But at the, at the moment where the iPhone sales had exceeded the digital, digital cameras, it was too late. And I think that's the moment that the banks who are not paying attention will realize that we cannot do anything anymore. That's the moment when everybody has this cool or sexy app on their phone, it not being your app. Uh, Robin, uh, question, question for you. If, if, if they keep stealing away those customers at the rate they do with their sexy, cool uh, propositions, do you believe that the established banks will become commodities, dump pipes? Um, well, it's, uh, I think, I think the, what's really interesting is just how much technology is, 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 is coming through to the mobile phone and, uh, and, and, you know, I think the focus is more about, uh, customer experience these days than, you know, the products that you, you necessarily can get from your bank. Um, I think we, uh, you know, we're a, we're a, a data center, global data center company, and, uh, we, we very much look at the, the pipes and the plumbing of, of the internet and, and how mobile phones connect with the workloads <coughs> that, in this case, are offered by the banks, which are the retail banking, you know, uh, application servers and etc. And we see that at the moment the uh, the, the, the incumbent banks have have uh, followed a, a strategy of bringing all the architecture to the centre, keeping you know customer records and customer data, you know, all in one sort of localized place. But customers want that information in their hands, and customers move all around the world. So I think one of the one of the things that we'll see a revolution is is this move of this centralized you know approach in terms of an architecture mm. to pushing things out to the edge of the internet in multiple locations strategically positioned around the world, so that you know as we uh, you know we get on a plane here in Schiphol and we get off a plane in Rio de Janeiro and we press our you know, our Avian AMRO or our number 26, you know, app on our phone, it actually finds a really good way of connecting through to the servers that, you know, may not be necessarily the other side of the world. They may be actually more local in, in Sao Paulo, for example, in this case. But does that make life easier for uh, uh, for Christopher and for Massimo? Well, it's uh, that's the job that, uh, you know, we're doing. We're making it easier as a, as a company by offering an architecture that uh, will support that type of user-centric approach rather than systems of record approach. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, I, I think the, the prefix dumb in front of dumb pipes is unnecessary for m many instances, just like we discussed yesterday. For, for many banks, for many incumbents, it's why not become just an uh, infrastructure provider, uh, providing loans as a commodity to actors like, like Moven. If you are a big transaction bank, um, if Moven originates the loans, you will still make money. Uh, we are at the same situation at Abba and Amro. 75% uh, of our income is from uh, interest margins. Uh, now we are an alliance of regional savings banks. So for us, becoming that, it is impossible. We have to change our whole vision, everything. But for a lot of the banks, um, that's a strategic choice. And you can still make a lot of money uh, sitting behind having moved in there. And I, when I was appointed as a VP of strategy, uh, one, of the, um, one of the key issues back then was to make sure that we are not sitting in the back seat while somebody else, for instance, Google, Apple, or moving is driving the car. <coughs> but after working with this for a couple of years now, realizing that at some points, it's not bad to sit in the back seat, but it's a big difference be between placing yourself in the back seat, asking to move the seat forward, to get some, get some leg room, and being placed in the back seat by somebody else. But w what is your idea? Do you think a lot of banks are going to place themselves on the back seat and let the customer interaction and the cool apps to the challenger banks? Or is there going to be a battle about the attention that the customer gives to your brand? I think we will see both. You have banks like your partner bank out of the U.S., like a lending club, having a web bank of Yura as a, as a partner bank. And you have bank like, banks like us. We, we will fight till the bitter end of uh, maintaining the customer relationship. But still, we're talking to Moven uh, because we see 
we can compete, we can collaborate. That's the tradition of the Nordic banks. We have been competing and collaborating for so many years. So now there's challenger banks thrown into the mix. All right, why should we do a different approach to them? I just got an email from our biggest competitor. They wanted me to do a presentation at their management meeting in June. So why not? We have partnered banks that have decided that uh, what we have is something that they can deploy quickly. They don't have to wait two years until they build it themselves with a 50-50 chance of success Mm -hmm. and the cost probably 10 times what they would pay us in license. But there are are big banks that say we can do everything for everyone. We have $100 million or $4 billion IT budget. You don't matter to us. Sure, go ahead. There is room for everybody. This is not... Uh, banking is not a place where there is one bank all over the world. Yeah, it's not a Google kind of industry. Yeah, we, there are tens of thousands of banks. Yeah. It's room for everybody. I was just, I was just going to say when um, two potential uh, um, two potential uh, uh, competitors do come together and uh, start to, to look at how they can improve things, innovation accelerates. Mm. Yeah. It accelerates. People get out of their comfort zones. Uh, they, uh, you know, they start thinking of new ways of doing things that uh, maybe they didn't. They, they're not doing themselves separately, but when they come together, yeah, innovation uh, really, uh, really does accelerate. So you're saying that working with a fintech is already smart because of all the innovation and learning you get from it. Well, absolutely. I mean, look at look at what is going on right now. We are all going to get. At because of the result of all this going on, much better banking services over the next five years, much better insight into uh, managing our uh, finances and et cetera. So Nicholas, do you feel that, because uh, you work with MasterCard, you work with Wirebank, Wirebank. was that an argument for them to uh, work with number 26, sharing innovation? Yes, or and were they I just think scared and they didn't want to miss the boat? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I think we can, this is definitely like a mutually beneficial collaboration um, to everybody's point, more or less. Um, they are like, for example, for Wirecard, they do the regulatory heavy lifting in the background. They provide the pipes, as people call it. And we do this level of user interface, which is the part where we're good at. And they do what they're good at. And so together we have a mutual uh, partnership that's beneficial for both. And, but, but where do you see this, uh, this ending? Is it going to be one big ecosystem of uh, friendly people working together? Or is there going to be some consolidation at some point? <laughs> that's a, that's a million dollar question. I think I think there will be a little bit of both. Um, so there will be, I'm sure there will be some sort of big players will be driven out of the market. Um, some some players will will want to have the full value chain basically from from the piping to the customer. And and so, but I think that's just a normal normal evolution evolution in every business where uh, where the good players then in the end will survive. Yeah, but Massimo, uh, you're building a bank from scratch. Um, and it's, it's going to be really cool and sexy yeah, uh, with a concierge. Uh, we have Moven here. We have number 26 here. Is there anything that you would like to steal from them or know from them uh, or something that you say, hey, they can help me with that? Well, first of all, uh, uh, we are happy to be in the game. So, and we, we look at uh, the experiences of number 26 and other challenger banks uh, because uh, they have uh, great models, great business, business models. I must say that there is a, a great uh, uh, need uh, to reach the customer in the right way. Mm-hmm. So challenger banks uh, have a proven track record to reach the customer effectively, or they are demonstrating they have a, 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 great, uh, a great way to reach customers. Um, one thing that we are trying to do in, uh, in Body Bank and we are creating is a uh, a way to connect with the customers, not only from a technology point of view, from the app itself, from mobile, but also uh, with an asset that we are creating, it is a concierge service. We are looking at different models, for example, the hospitality models, to manage our customer in a dif- slightly different ways. Uh, so, for example, I heard about Jason uh, today uh, at the uh, opening conference, uh, speaking about not digitalizing products, but digitalizing everything, the ecosystem. So it means that uh, it means that also to look at different business, different sectors, in order to get the best of these sectors, in order to get the good, a good customer satisfaction, a good customer journey. So this is what we, we are trying to do. I see that uh, more or less with some difference, slightly difference, all the challenger banks are searching this kind of contact with the customer and are looking at increasing the number of customers quite rapidly. Maybe this time, at this time, as uh, the ABN Emerald CEO told us, 
uh, we are not so um, we are not uh, getting a lot of revenues from them right now, but the number of customers is constantly increasing. So this uh, the intersection point that Mircea told us before it will be reached soon, and this will be something that will uh, the big banks, big traditional banks, will take care of. So. Mircea, is there any advice that you can give uh, Massimo? Oh, so he has half half a year to build his bank now. Yeah, so he was talking about <laughs> building a branch from uh, a bank from scratch. Yeah, and uh, we've looked at that, and and what we have decided was to split various components of the stack into the ones where we think we can bring value, and that may come from our business model, from our know-how, from where we see the market going, and the ones where for a while we think that uh, the industry will be relatively static. So, for example, we have decided not to do our own core banking, but outsource from others, not only the software itself, but the whole uh, processing, back office processing, and so on, while focusing on the user experience. Yeah? And this was the Moven recipe. Everybody should have uh, her or his own recipe based on the team, on the know-how of the team, on the market yeah, that they are serving. Yeah? In some places, there are so many unbanked people that you should focus on the simplest service possible. We are in the U.S. where there are 4,000 banks and a lot of credit unions and so on. So why should anyone bank with Moven? So we are, we are focusing on the contextual banking experience, on the real time. On the moment you perform a transaction at the point of sale, you see the transaction, you see the transaction in the context of, your, of all your money, all the expenses that you've had. We do the analytics in a couple of seconds and tell you are you going in the right direction or not. So that's the differentiation. And for some banks, that may not be important if the only thing that you want is to give basic mobile banking services. Yeah. So it's a combination of tools that, in the end, will define your unique solution. We're talking a lot about uh, digital banking, uh, mobile banking. Um, but I believe there's also still you know, a market for branches, people that want to see people, uh, people that want to walk into a branch office and, and talk to a real person. Is it possible? that Moven or number 26 will ever open an office, a visible office with real people, just like Amazon <laughs> started to open bookstores? I think for us per personally, at this stage, this is not think uh, thinkable. Yeah. Um, we, th we believe that the sort of target group that we have and also how people will evolve over time, they will get used to the sort of the banking without this person behind the counter, I don't know, handing out the notes or, or whatever advice they, they, um, they give. Um, at the same time, I think what we believe in, one of the last sort of reasons why branches sort of exist is like to deposit and withdraw cash. Yeah. And that, in these days today, you can actually replicate through retail stores, through partners, where at every like till you can pay in or pay out cash when you do your grocery shopping. Again, you've made the customer's life simpler, so we're so sort the, of going the, in that direction. The bakery becomes the branch for number 26. Exactly. We don't have a branch. We don't plan to have a branch. Yeah. Actually, our number one, our number one performing digital ad is the one that says, "Never step into a branch again." <laughs> <laughs> and we get lots Four. of people Four. who love that that idea. Now, this being said, all the uh, potential partner banks, they all want to come and see us live in our office in New York. Yeah. Maybe it has to do with the fact that we are next to Madison Square Gardens. Maybe <laughs> they, they just want to see the physical people. Like, who are your banking operation guys here? These people are doing banking operations. So they want to see the physical part of Moven. Of course, there are people behind the technology, but customers are only mobile. Christopher, are you going to close all the uh, branches? No, we're not going to close all the branches. Uh, we're going to keep some, but we are reducing the number of branches. And, well, nobody knows the end game of this, and perhaps there will be an end game where the branches are not needed anymore, but we still have customers that would uh, enrage if we close down all the branches tomorrow. So we have to serve the customers of today and at the same time build the bank of tomorrow. That is the challenge for an increment bank, and you can do an approach just like... Um, Massimo here building a body bank on the outside, but as an advice to, to body bank is to 
prepare for that moment where you become too much of an annoyance when you have somebody in top level management saying that, whoa, 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 this is growing too fast. We have to slow down this success here even though we own it because this is cannibalizing the old existing ways and the old ways has always been the best best ways. So, so I think it all boils down to the culture side and how long should you keep the branches open? As of now, we need still a couple of them because of you have customers who prefer to speak to another human being. Maybe that will continue for our lifetimes. Maybe that will die off in five to ten years. We don't know. But we have to be agile. And being agile as a big incumbent bank, that's, that's a challenge. <laughs> that's what keeps me awake at night. <laughs> it's a challenge. I think that's the best way to uh, describe uh, challenger banks, existing banks, what's going on. It is a challenge, but I also think it's a lot of fun if I hear you talk about it. I see we have 0.0 seconds left on the clock, and they're very strict here in this organization because pretty soon the pitches for the challenger banks also start in this room. Gentlemen, I'd like to thank you for all your input. Oh, uh, thank you. Lovely to hear from you. If anyone has questions uh, for our panel members, please uh, walk up to them, approach them. I'm sure they're going to have a cup of coffee uh, upstairs. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.